Right. Uh, good afternoon to all the dignitaries. Today is a, a guest speaker, Professor Christopher Sir, and uh, Principal, Government Degree College for Women, Jagitian Satnaran Sir, and all the participants of today's webinar. That is emerging trends in green, red, and yellow biotechnologies by Professor T. Christopher Rubin, sir from uh, sir is a dean from Chaitanya Dean to be University, Hanmakunda. Uh, now I request uh, Principal Government Degree College for Women, Satnaran, sir, to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Today, we are conducting emerging trends in green, yellow, red biotechnologies with association RBVRR College, Hyderabad. And uh, Principal Madam Achuta Devi Garu and HOD Rajini Devi Garu and resource person Christopher Garu and my dear colleague Tirupati Garu. It is uh, a good opportunity to participate in this uh, webinar, sir. Today, we know about the uh, green technologies and biotechnologies, yellow and red technologies and uh, given message by the uh, Christopher Gar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, now I invite our respected head department of botany, RB Vera Women's College, to speak few words about today's webinar. Good afternoon to all respected members of management, both college principals, faculty, and my dear students. I welcome you all for today's webinar on emerging trends in green, yellow, and red biotechnology. I welcome Professor Christopher Sir, Dean, Faculty of Science, Chaitanya Dean to be University. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. It's our great, it's our immense pleasure to invite, sir. And uh, we are very happy, sir, to accept our invitation and to be present here as a resource person. Uh, now I invite uh, Dr. P. Manjula, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, to introduce today's resource person, Professor Christopher, sir. Over to you, Manjula. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon, one and all. It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker, Professor Christopher Rubin, sir, Dean Chaitanya Demut to be University. Sir completed MSc and PhD from Kakatiya University and awarded University Research Fellowship and Senior Research Fellowship from Kakatiya University and Research Associateship from University of Delhi. Sir held different positions during tenure of working, his working uh, like course coordinator of medical transcription during 2008, additional controller of examination during 2013 to 15, head of the department during 2018, director foreign relations officer during, 2000, uh, during 2017 to 18. Presently, Sari is dean of research development Chaitanya Dimukubi University, Varangal. Uh, Sar has 15 years of teaching experience and 20 years of research experience in the areas of plant tissue culture, genetic transformation, molecular markers, and SAR has published 48 national and international journals, and SAR has, has to his credit three major research projects. Uh, currently, SAR, uh, currently eight PhD scholars are working under SAR's supervision. SAR attended 28 national and international conferences, and SAR has delivered 25 invited lectures in various colleges. Uh, through this brief introduction, now I hand over the session to sir. No, no. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Manjula. So before uh, sir's uh, talk, I welcome 
our respected uh, secretary come correspondent professor sudarshan reddy sir uh, sir hello sudarshan reddy sir nas yeah ma'am sir can unmute ma'am yeah yeah okay uh, sir you can unmute yourself sir you can speak few words on this uh, occasion Sir, Sudarshan sir. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, let me at the outset uh, apologize for the delay in joining uh, in the seminar webinar because I was away traveling from uh, Madhapur. Uh, and just just reached and uh, i am very happy that this uh, this collab firstly i uh, thank dr satyanayan garu principal of government degree college for women jagityal because this collaborative effort was was the initiative of the previous principal and our own principal and uh, the the uh, the because of the efforts of the departments of botany of rb vera women's college and the government degree college jagityal I, i must mention the name of dr padala tirupati who made lot of effort in uh, establishing this togetherness between the two institutions this is wonderful and this has been in fact this was uh the result of the pandemic situation this was in fact started in the beginnings of pandemic situation and which is continuing and this this is uh, a great effort and uh, uh apart from this the two institutions also made effort to provide free coaching to the students of both the institutions and also others as far as pg uh, coaching uh Uh, of cpj is concerned i am told a good number of students have been selected in the just concluded uh <clears throat> what you call the admission process so i am on, on behalf of the management i also welcome the guest speaker of today's webinar professor christopher ruben formerly kakatiya university i am just now told he is now with chaitanya dimudi university of warangal and uh, he is going to speak on a, a wonderful areas like emerging uh, trends in uh, green red and <clears throat> yellow biotechnologies i hope this the students of both the institutions and others will make use of this uh, lecture and uh, uh <clears throat> maybe uh, fruitfully benefited and uh, uh, this such a effort will continue in the days to come in fact in the years to come i appreciate the efforts of the heads of both the colleges rajani and padala tirupati and also the principals and other faculties who are involved in this kind of academic effort and i once again on behalf of the management and on my own behalf welcome the guest speaker as well as the principal of the government degree college for women jagityal thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share some of my ideas with you thank you very much thank you very much sir for your wonderful ideas and suggestions for these webinars now i invite today's guest speaker professor christopher sir to hand over the session to take over the session sir uh, to you sir good i can share the screen madam enable me to share this okay sir nazmin please enable sir to share the screen i have already done that yes sir so you can share sir Post disabled participant screening share. I don't know. 
मैडम नाजिन सर इज गेटिंग फर्स्ट हैज अ डिसेबल्ड एनेबल चेकिंग आई एम चेकिंग मैम 1 मिनट ओके sir please try now yeah yes madam thank you thank you thank you so much yeah yeah uh, uh thank you uh, uh respected uh, secretary uh, sudarshan reddy aru principal of uh, uh, <coughs> rbprr women's college narayan guda hyderabad and also principal of women's uh, government degree college from jagithyal for giving me an opportunity through uh, uh, rajini madam and uh, uh, through kavita madam and also tirupati for this opportunity to uh, speak to uh, ug students so the topic that i have selected uh, is is not is not uh, not that new but i will try to present what is uh, green biotechnology and what is yellow biotechnology and red biotechnology i'll be trying to uh, present the information present uh, uh, during uh, this course of this uh, um, discussion and then one more important thing is uh, i am very grateful to all of you for giving me this opportunity uh, for presenting uh, this particular uh, study okay so my acknowledgments uh, are to uh, dr g sudarshan reddy is a secretary uh, dr j archita devi principal of uh, rd jr women's college hyderabad dr y satnarayan sir principal government degree college for women jagitia uh, special thanks to dr ray rajini uh, reddy madam from department of uh, botany rd jr women's college hyderabad uh, dr kavita dr p sirupati and uh, dr p manjula so i am uh, grateful to every one of you for giving me this opportunity right so uh, i am going to show you some very important things pertaining to food pertaining to medicine uh, father of genetics is mendel 1865 he laid the foundation for uh, <clears throat> plant breeding he was responsible for developing the system of mono hybrid ratio and di hybrid ratio so he he was one of those persons who has contributed to the food production in the world the next uh, we come across is uh, alexander fleming alexander fleming 1921 was responsible for the discovery of antibiotics first antibiotic was penicillin up till that time there was no antibiotic it was uh, used it was not uh, known to them but uh, it was a great effort made by uh, alexander fleming uh, who has finally isolated antibiotic which is the uh, uh, suppressor of uh, uh, bacterial infection and other infections caused by bacteria and uh, norman borlaug is father of green revolution uh, with him uh, he worked on wheat he's from mexico with him he was awarded nobel prize for his contribution to food production so these three persons have a lot of things to play for food and medicine so in further lecture also i will be Uh, uh trying to highlight some of these developments that have originated uh, from these persons okay and then uh, from our country it is dp pal uh, he was the first director general of indian council of agriculture research and also is a first plant breeder and agronomist so he hails from delhi and then he has contributed a lot to food production 
Then we also have M. S. Swaminathan, who is the father of Indian Green Revolution. India was a uh, deficit in food production, but after M. S. Swaminathan, in association with Norman Borlaug, were able to make India from a deficit to a surplus country. Thanks to, to these people who have uh, contributed much for the food production. Today, we have sufficient food in our country. Uh, it is because of uh, Swaminathan's contribution. The person in the center is uh, Sir Ronald Ross. He was also in India. He received Nobel Prize in uh, Physiology of Medicine in 1902 because he first discovered that malaria enters into human system through mosquitoes. So that was the reason uh, I have given all the three names, uh, D.P. Pals, uh, Ronald Ross, and M.S. Swaminathan. And the other great scientists of our country, I call them as biotechnologists or plant scientists. One is Jagdish Chandra Bose. Jag Jagdish Chandra Bose is onto this side, onto the right side. Uh, he was a person who actually recognized <clears throat> plant movement and he developed a, an instrument called chrysograph. Uh, then we have Panchanan Maheshwari, who was a great embryologist of our country. Then we have Sipra Guha Mukherjee. <clears throat> she was the first lady scientist from our country who actually studied somatic embryogenesis in Datura, uh, in anther culture. That's the first contribution in tissue culture. Professor Ashish Datta is also, was also a professor of JNU and also vice chancellor of JNU. And then he uh, isolated the genes for protein from uh, crop plants. And then he introduced them into other crops. Then Maskarin Haas from National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. He worked on in vitro flowering in bamboo. Bamboo flowering happens once in lifetime. But uh, this group in NCL Pune was able to achieve uh, flowering inside a test tube, inside a culture tube. And that's real achievement. Then Deepak Paintel, who was the vice chancellor of uh, Delhi University, he developed male sterility by using genetic engineering method. Then Anand Kumar, uh, who uh, was uh, responsible for developing BT Brinjal, which is not released in our country yet. Then Professor A.R. Mehta is from Baroda, Gujarat. He was responsible for developing secondary metabolites from tissue cultures. Professor Lakshmi Sita from IAS Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. She was involved in micropropagation of uh, sandalwood. Sandalwood is endemic to our country. A very, very rich uh, uh, vegetation we have uh, in our country. Here you see a photograph. Uh, she's uh, interacting with Prince Phil in IIC Bangalore. Then Professor G.M. Reddy is also one of the well-known uh, plant tissue culturists of South India. He is from Osmania uh, University. So I have grouped some of them. So they have made rich contribution to growth of the plants. Okay. And then uh, father of biotechnology is Louis Pasteur. Uh, 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 we also know that Louis Pasteur is also father of microbiology. So it has its roots in uh, uh, biotechnology. Then the word biotechnology was coined by Erike, Karoli Erike. He's a um, chemical scientist, a chemist. So these two people have made uh, uh, the beginning of this. Okay. And I also have some uh, important names here. Herbert Boyer and uh, Cohen. These were the two people who actually uh, developed the RDNA technology for crops. Uh, Charles Arnidsen was responsible for uh, producing tomato, uh, which has a long shelf life, flavor sour tomato, you call it. You can store it for three weeks outside a refrigerator. And then Ingo Potricus was a scientist who developed golden rice, where rice will have uh, the gene for provitamin A. Uh, that is how uh, Ingo Patricus from Switzerland uh, has been able to develop. And then Phil Ledar and Tim Stewart were responsible for developing a mouse model for cancer. So that is how they have contributed. 
these two people that we see here, Kerry <clears throat> Mullis, a great contribution to science, to experimental science. He has developed polymerase chain reaction in a thermocycler. He has developed his invented thermocycler. Today we are using RT-PCR for detecting coronavirus. So PCR was actually developed by Kerry Mullis. And among all important contribution was Margaret Dordayhoff. She is the mother of bioinformatics. Very important uh, contribution. Uh, she has developed an atlas for uh, proteins. So she's the mother of uh, bioinformatics. So students can remember uh, this uh, issue when you go for writing an exam. Right. So biotechnology, all of us will uh, come across this word uh, biotechnology. But in the word biotechnology, there are 10 classes of biotechnology, 10 areas of biotechnology. This was done by uh, UNESCO. Uh, uh, they, have got, they have given colors. So you call it as 10 colors of biotechnology. Uh, first is the green biotechnology pertains to agriculture where you have crop improvement via breeding program, biotechnology, CRISPR-Cas technology, all those things. Then you have yellow biotechnology, where we have food and nutrition, uh, fermentation, uh, biotransformation, uh, and insect biotechnology. I will be today dealing with insect biotechnology, not the first to do. A lot of information is available with fermentation and biotransformation. The third one is red biotechnology, it deals with medical and health sciences. And then gray biotechnology is environment and ecology, where we study about the pollution, the climate change, global warming, all those things we study on the gray biotechnology. And white biotechnology is industrial biotechnology, where we have processing and production of uh, chemicals. Gold biotechnology is about bioinformatics, nanotechnology, where we study about the 3D structure of various biomolecules. Blue biotechnology pertains to aquaculture and marine aquaculture, where we study about uh, marine and freshwater uh, organisms, fishes, marine animals. Brown biotechnology pertains to arid zone or desert biotechnology, uh, where we have uh, crops, animal management in such a situation. Purple biotechnology is one where we study about publications and inventions. This is very important. All the students need to look into this every time. This is intellectual property right. So every student can really look into this uh, purple biotechnology. You can patent certain things which you observe day and day out in your life. This also is one good area where you can uh, really work on. And then the dark biotechnology is what we now try to study is about biological weapons, bioterrorism, uh, which is not the right one. Uh, even Corona is also said to be a part of this biological weapon. We're not very sure, but whatever it may be, we see dark biotechnology uh, is creating bioterrorism uh, among the human population. So I have a list of 10 uh, colors of biotechnology uh, for human uh, welfare. So I will be dealing with first four today. Uh, I'll be presenting various aspects of that. Okay, the first one is green biotechnology. Yeah, so this cotton plant, this is called bowl. And this bowl has a larva entering in and then eating all the seed material, the fiber, the cotton fiber. So this is a very uh, uh, dangerous pest on uh, cotton. Net result is at the end of the harvest, you will not get a good quantity of uh, um, this particular fiber, which is very important for us. So this is a picture that happens in every uh, country where cotton is cultivated. But in order to overcome this situation, uh, scientists have engineered a gene called crygene. Crygene is called crystal protein gene. Okay, from 
they have isolated this gene from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis. From this bacteria, they have isolated a gene called cry gene, and this cry gene produces this protein called crystal protein. And when uh, the larva starts to eat the leaf, uh, the plant starts to produce crystal proteins. As a result of this, uh, the larva dies. Okay, so this is the whole story. Uh, finally, the larva dies because of septicemia. That is how we are able to overcome uh, a pest infection in case of uh, cotton. And today we have BT cotton grown in every part of our country, especially in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. You go to any village, you don't have the regular varieties of cotton, but you have BT cotton. And farmers are uh, getting good yields in BT cotton. Uh, so far, there have been no reports of uh, adverse uh, situations on this because this is not a edible uh, uh, crop. This is a crop of, for commerce, so there is no much uh, uh, damage done because of this uh, genetic engineering method. Yeah, the second one that I would like to tell you is about brinjal. Brinjal also is infected by the same kind of uh, uh, pest. This is called fruit and shoot borer. So it bores into the shoot region, and this is how it lays eggs, and then the larva come out, and the larva starts to eat this. This is also the shoot. This is how the larva is eaten. This is a fruit borer, same borer. It also bores into the uh, brinjal fruit here. This is another brinjal fruit. So all this is because of lysinoides arbonalis. This is the pest. So when you cut open it, you see uh, the seeds and the pulp is being uh, eaten away, and then you have the larva uh, pupa inside it. So this is what happens with the uh, 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 brinjal. So scientists, uh, this is the lucinoides orbinalis. This is the fly, the insect. It lays eggs. Uh, this is the larva, uh, pupa, and then the adult. So this cycle goes on. So it can have one or two cycles on on brinjal uh, crop uh, every, uh, every time it infects. So this is one area. So what scientists did is they have developed BT brinjal. Why I have not given you BT brinjal details is uh, BT brinjal has not been uh, released in India. There is a moratorium on this particular BT brinjal because it is a vegetable. So there are a lot of discussion going on whether we should release this for the market, for the population. A lot of things are being discussed, so it is not released yet. But Bangladesh and other parts of the world uh, are having BT brinjal. Uh, it is uh, used as a vegetable. BT brinjal is used, uh, used as a vegetable. And there is no side effects because of uh, the genetic engineering method. The third one is what we see is this golden rice. This is very important. You see a kid here. Usually in Africa, thousands of kids die every year because of uh, vitamin A deficiency. They, they have uh, blindness. So uh, Potricus from Switzerland. Uh, so see, Switzerland does not grow uh, rice. Switzerland grows wheat. But see the interest of this scientist that uh, wants to save people, children, especially from uh, third world countries in Africa and India, where we have uh, uh, rice as a staple food. So they have engineered uh, vitamin A gene uh, into uh, uh, rice, and now rice is uh, golden rice. I'll show you a picture of that. So again, this is also because of genetic engineering, and because of this, now African countries are growing uh, uh, golden rice. In India, uh, golden rice has not been released yet so far. Okay. So the third thing, uh, fourth thing I would like to suggest uh, to present here is there is a lot of micronutrient deficiency. This is called hidden hunger. Uh, about 190 million children are suffering from the want of major micronutrients and vitamins. Okay, so uh, vitamin A deficiency. This is because of vitamin A deficiency. See, as we have uh, rice as a uh, staple food in our country, especially South India. In Africa, banana is staple food. 
yeah sorry uh, this is the uh, wild type of rice and this is the uh, golden rice one where we can see f faintly uh, vitamin uh, a and this is golden rice too we can see uh, a, a, a intense golden uh, color this is because of vitamin a so now this has not been released in india but is in elsewhere right so uh, this is what i'm trying to tell you is golden banana what is golden banana is see in africa as we have uh, uh, rice in our country they have banana in their country as staple food banana is also water intensive crop please uh, uh, understand this as rice is a water intensive crop banana also needs lot of crop lot of water okay but this is a staple food so what scientists did is they have introduced vitamin a pro vitamin a pva into banana so when they have introduced into banana banana started to express See, this is uh, how it started to express so using transgenic technology uh, they have been able to develop this golden banana and this golden banana is now uh, enriched with vitamin a and uh, the population can consume now a banana uh, that is what is being done in case of uh, some african countries see here this is transgenic banana and being explained about how transgenic bananas have been developed. Yeah, uh, from here, what are the emerging trends in uh, green biotechnology? One of the very important uh, thing that I would like to suggest today is conservation of biodiversity. I have some pictures at the end, I'll show you them. Conservation of biodiversity, we need to protect flora and fauna from being endangered. Then we need to produce colored cotton. Why we need to produce colored cotton is artificial dyeing of cotton has created a lot of problems, health problems. Uh, they have caused cancer. So we don't want artificial dyeing. We want uh, a natural blue colored cotton, natural red colored cotton for which we are trying to use uh, uh, our DNA technology. Another very important area that we need to understand is degradation of plastics. We need to develop recombinant proteins in bacteria using genetic engineering methodology to dissolve polyhydroxybutyrate PHP. This has become a major pollutant in all the, in all the states of our country. Uh, it is found that plastics are being eaten by cows, by buffaloes, by cattle, by any kind of uh, animal, which is now going to cause a lot of problem for us. So this is one, one area where we need to study. These are the trends, emerging trends that are happening in green biotechnology. Then we have avenue plantation. What is a genetically engineered avenue plantation is, the plants will have green fluorescent protein. So when we are traveling on the road and your vehicle uh, will put its light, uh, you have this radium uh, fluorescing. Now what scientists are planning is, we'll have avenue plants with GFP gene, so that when uh, lights fall on the uh, uh, plants that are on the either side of the road, they will fluoresce, they will highlight. So as a result, it becomes easy for the driver to see uh, uh, what are the uh, problems or stumbling blocks there. Then bioinformatics is another area. Then uh, Biopesticide, biofertilizers, bioinsecticides, then crops that withstand uh, climate change. This is a, a recent one. A lot of climate change effects are being visible. Uh, so drought tolerant. Then we have, we need to have uh, cybrids. Cybrids are protoplast fusion. Cybrids are protoplast fusion that we need to uh, develop. And then bioremediation. This is the use of vetiver roots to clean water, to purify water. So these are emerging trends in green biotechnology. So students uh, can uh, look into this kind of situation and uh, also can undertake some projects. I'll be able to show you one or two at the end. Okay, the second one is, uh, I have gone to red biotechnology. Red biotechnology is pertaining to uh, medical and health sciences. Okay, uh, the first, uh, uh, genetically engineered product is humulin. Humulin uh, is, is the uh, RDNA technology product wherein 
uh, insulin gene is inserted into bacteria and bacteria starts to produce um, uh, insulin uh, that is called humulin. I'll show you a picture of that, how humulin is produced. And another very important thing is vaccines. Today, we are very much interested in getting uh, vaccines uh, for corona. Not only for corona, we need vaccines for uh, cholera. We need vaccines for uh, different types of viruses, different types of bacterial diseases, TB. So we need a lot of uh, vaccines. So can we use RDNA technology for developing vaccines is also being explored. Then uh, gene therapy, uh, wherein we introduce a gene. Uh, example in hemophilia, fibrinogen, I have also a picture of that. Then one very important area is your diagnostics, wherein polymerase chain reaction, which we call as RT-PCR now is used for uh, diagnosing viral diseases also for uh, uh, DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting has come up, then protein uh, footprinting, all these have come up because of uh, our DNA technology. And finally, human genome project. This is one area where we have to look at what is the human genome project. A lot of uh, information has been collected from this human genome project, which went for 15 years. And the entire human genome, all the 23 chromosomes have been sequenced. We know where a gene is now, which chromosome, what is the size of the gene, what is the sequence of the gene. You have just to fish out from your bioinformatic tools from uh, public domain, and then uh, we need to understand, we, need, we can use it for our research. So red biotechnology here. Yeah. This is, uh, as I've told you, we are interested in DNA and RNA-based vaccines. So here you have DNA, and RNA-based vaccines. This is whole vaccine, which you're not going to detail, but you have DNA-based vaccines and RNA-based vaccines. So we need to develop vaccines for uh, different kind of viruses, okay? Uh, because viruses cause a lot of uh, disease on human. So people are being, uh, people are trying to find out various methods of using this gene, how to develop vaccines. Yeah, human genome project, I've told you that. This is one chromosome. Today we know, the chromosome DNA sequence. We, don't, we know where is the location. This is centromere. This is P arm. This is Q arm. So we know what is the sequence. So all the 23 chromosomes have been sequenced. We know where is the proto oncogene now. We know where is the blue eye color gene now. We know what is the hair color gene now. Which chromosome? What is the sequence? It is now being uh, available for research. Uh, through Human Genome Project. Yeah, this is diabetes mellitus, a very common uh, uh, disease uh, that is happening now with uh, not only elders, but younger boys and girls also. So this is uh, uh, pancreas. Um, the beta cells will release uh, um, insulin, and then they, label, they maintain the level of uh, carbohydrate or sugar in your uh, blood. Blood sugar they maintain. You have diabetes 1, uh, type 2 diabetes. So two types of diabetes are there. This is called diabetes mellitus. A lot of people are suffering. One major reason why people are suffering from diabetes is stress. Is stress, not, not just the other uh, information, but it is stress. A lot of stress is there uh, for, for people. Uh, so because of stress, uh, they have uh, uh, become victims of diabetes mellitus. So this is the methodology. Uh, recombinant DNA uh, is introduced into bacteria. Now bacteria starts to produce uh, insulin. This insulin uh, is purified uh, and then it is called as humulin. This is called humulin. So humulin, uh, human insulin, recombinant DNA origin. So this is how uh, now it is available in the market. Earlier, uh, earlier uh, we, we used to get insulin uh, from animals. Uh, we used to get pancreas of animals and uh, isolate insulin from that and use it exogenously, but it was causing allergy. So scientists have designed this. Eli Lilly company has developed this particular methodology. And today, uh, humulin is available in every medical store for uh, treatment of diabetes. Okay. Yeah. This is another one, another disease called hemophilia. What is hemophilia? Is Hemophilia is loss of blood on an injured part. Why uh, uh, loss of blood? 
uh, because there is no gene uh, for producing fibrinogen. Fib fibrinogen is a uh, clotting factor. So uh, they don't have a clotting factor in them. So fibrinogen is not produced. Uh, clotting factor is not a mutation. So uh, fibrinogen is not produced. When fibrinogen is not produced, then automatically what happens is the blood will uh, uh, go out. See, this is how you see. Uh, this is the blood stream, uh, normal clotting. But here, uh, there is no clotting, so blood will lose out. This is the natural one that we have. So the kid is getting blood from his nose, from injured part, because there is no clotting factor. Uh, this exactly what happens is you have a clotting factor like this. So all the blood vessels, uh, all the platelets, uh, all the cells in the blood will be entangled here. But persons suffering from hemophilia will not have clotting factor. So as a result, what happens is the blood oozes out. This has become a very common disease. It is called royal disease because mostly it happens in uh, royal families. But see, the kid is suffering from uh, blood coming out from his uh, nose. Uh, yeah, so what scientists have done is from Human Genome Project, they have isolated this gene, the gene for uh, fibrinogen, and they have inserted that gene into uh, the hemopoietic cells where blood is produced. So that is being worked out. We hope that in short, hemophilia also will be corrected through gene therapy. Yeah, and then this is called uh, aging. A lot of people uh, age uh, from uh, when they move from uh, senior citizens, uh, they become age. Uh, see in this picture, see this is uh, a youthful face, while here you have an aging face, you have wrinkles, okay? And then uh, you have uh, uh, jaws having foldings. This is happening, okay? So what scientists have found is, Telomer region in the chromosome. Telomer region in the chromosome is responsible for aging. Why? Because at every round of replication, the genes that are present at the end of uh, telomer region are lost. So because of this, they say that aging is introduced into human. As a result, they have developed a technology called TERT technology. Using TERT technology, now they want to reverse aging. They want to make people youthful, uh, though have to travel for 60 years or 70 years, they want to bring back. And that is being worked out by, again, by uh, uh, reverse uh, aging is done by TERT therapy. Again, this is gene, genetic engineering method. Okay. I am showing you one very important uh, aspect of yellow biotechnology. Yellow biotechnology does deal with fermentation, biotransformation, uh, uh, also um, wine making, but I'm not going to, be, to deal with them. I'm going to deal with this one particular aspect that is the Indian, Indian honeybee. This Indian honeybee is the best honey pollinator. It is called Epicerana indica. Because of Indian honeybee and other pollinators also, you have seed production. All crops get seeds because these are the pollinators. Okay, but their numbers are declining. The numbers of uh, honeybees is declining. Why? Because of human anthropogenic activity. We are doing a lot of uh, anthropogenic activity. We are using pesticides, so they are not able to tolerate, they die. And then European honeybees are attacking them. So this is what we need to understand that we need to protect honeybees. How, I'll tell you in the next one or two slides, right? So we need to have some biotechnological tools to protect these honeybees, okay? Right, uh, for uh, those who have not seen, uh, I am showing you Lufa cylindrica. Uh, Lufa cylindrica, male flower. Lufa cylindrica is uh, Dira, Neti Dira in, in Telugu. Uh, uh, Tirupati and uh, Sujata, uh, they have worked on this particular plant, okay? Uh, I had the opportunity to look exactly what happens during the process of pollination. So I will show you this particular video.
Okay, so this is the first video. Now, now see the second video. This is a female flower. Yeah, what we find in this is honeybees intelligent. Why? Because male flower, honeybee knows that there is pollen grain as well as there is nectary glands at the base. In order to release the pollen grain from the uh, male flower, it will vibrate with its wings. That is what we find in case of first case. Why this is vibrating? Why is it, why is it uh, vibrating is to see that the pollen held in this pollen grain uh, in this anther will be released and they fall here. So that it, then it can collect. How intelligent is this particular insect uh, pollinator has to be very much appreciated. In this case, uh, you don't find that it will uh, hover over it. It just comes, picks up uh, the nectar and then leaves that sound. So that, that is what happened. So, these are very intelligent beings, very intelligent beings. So how do we protect as students? Uh, this question was asked in the last meeting also. Students can visit your sunflower or some crop in the nearby fields and they can go for apiculture. Thereby you're protecting uh, uh, these uh, uh, insects. Very interesting and useful in, in insects. That is uh, pollinators, an Indian honeybee. If you want to do some small projects, you can have a small apiculture unit in a nearby place uh, where you have a small farm. Uh, then you can also uh, study how, how intelligent this particular uh, insect will be able to perform. Yeah. And the last one is the gray biotechnology. Uh, very distressing very damaging. What is that is a lot of oil is spilled into uh, the sea. These are the ships. Uh, the ships collide. As a result, the oil is spilled into the sea. This is the net result, birds die. See, this man is trying to protect, trying to remove, but this is disastrous to marine life. See, this is a tortoise, okay? Tortoise is covered with oil. Uh, some persons are trying to see whether we can remove oil, the animal, the, the tortoise dies, bird has died. Uh, this is a cormorant, it has died because of this particular, and then surf scooter also has died. It is going to die because of this oil uh, spill, okay? Uh, in Gulf of Mexico, they are trying to spray some uh, oil uh, decontamination de 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 uh, uh, de oil that is called Corexit. Core but uh, it is not. It has not solved the problem. So in this aspect, you should remember Anand Chakravarti. He created Pseudomonas putida, or he he engineered. Sorry, he engineered Pseudomonas putida. What is Pseudomonas putida? It will gobble up oil from the ocean. His is the first patent awarded for a living organism in the whole universe, whole world. Anand Chakravarti was granted a patent for engineering Pseudomonas putida, which will gobble up, which will remove oil from the ocean. Okay, so this is the technology that he has used. Finally, you can be, he found that he can degrade camphor, degrade octane, xylol, naphthalene. So he got uh, strain G, and now this can be used to remove oil from uh, the sea. Uh, or the ocean. This is being uh, explored and it, it, I think in course of time be useful. Okay, right. Yeah, uh, I've come to the end of uh, this small lecture. What I'm showing you is a museum. A lot of uh, birds, animals. This is not in our country. This is elsewhere. Uh, most of these are endangered. Most of these pictures that I'm showing you are endangered. Why, how, uh, I have no answer for that, but they become endangered. One very important thing that I would like to tell you is about our 
house sparrow. Okay, so house sparrow, these are uh, having a good time. These are the male and the female. The mother is feeding the chick. House sparrow are affected because of antennas, where we have your vibration, where we have radiation. Okay, so if this is a situation, in due course, what they're saying is 4G technology might be affecting them. Now we have 7G technology. What will happen? All these birds will be exterminated sometime. So what as students that we can do is we should feed them, give them some water. If you come across a group of birds there, you can give water, you can give them some grain. So thereby, uh, these birds will be protected. Here, uh, a person has given um, a, a home for these birds to stay. I'm giving you one example, uh, which, which I, from my childhood, have seen a lot of these uh, uh, house sparrows. But today, uh, in my locality, in my place, I don't find them. Maybe you can find them in the fringes of the cities or towns, but where you have villages, but I don't find them now uh, in my place also. So as students, we can protect them. As students, we can help them by providing grain and providing water. This is one area where you can do a small project for your MSc, uh, for your BSc. Here, this is a place where you see in Chennai, all the students have formed a uh, awareness program where they formed into a bird, uh, that is the safe bird concept. So this is how they are trying to uh, educate people to protect birds. Okay. Uh, another very important thing is this is a common sight in everybody's house. We have your tulasi uh, tree, and these are plants. Every teach, student has to have this kind of growth. We need to protect plants. We need to grow plants in our backyard. We need to have all kinds of plants, ornamental plants, fruit plants. See how beautiful um, this particular picture gives us. So at least from the point of view of our religious sanctity, let us protect our plants. These are very, very uh, indispensable for future generations. You lose them, I think we are going to, uh, we, we, doomsday is not far away from us. Here, uh, this group of people are donating uh, uh, trees, smaller uh, saplings, medicinal plants, free donation. They are not charging. This kind of uh, attitude has to develop uh, uh, for our students so that we need to protect. We need to do this. Also, we can uh, give some plants, tulasi plants, medicinal plants, uh, aloe vera, uh, some, uh, zero fights. So we need to understand that grow medicinal plants and distribute free to people. At least by doing that, we'll be able to uh, protect them in, in our kitchen garden, in our backyard. Yeah, so the last slide is all for one and one for all. Keep biodiversity or our future may fall. Okay, so some future RDNA technologies, they're going to say that uh, we have introduced a green fluorescent protein gene into mice and see the ears and the eyes of these mice are fluorescent. Okay, so they can be used as models. Yeah, you're going to create transgenic birds. See here, they have introduced a green um, GFP gene, green fluorescent protein gene. So the chick that is produced here is green uh, in color, green fluorescent uh, 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 chick. And, Several approaches are being uh, used for developing uh, a vaccine for viruses. So the end is Namaskar. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Any questions, I'll be able to answer. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, for your enlightened uh, lecture. Yes. Uh, participants from the student side, any queries? Uh, 
you can please answer regarding any questions you want to raise the questions students if you have any doubts in this uh, talk later delivered by sir uh, sir there is a question from akila sharma one of the student yeah uh, uh, she is asking how does the fluorescent genes yeah uh, this this will help us uh, for making corrections in some diseases see normally we develop models mouse model chick model models are very essential without models you cannot do it on human so these are models so what scientists are trying to see is can we introduce green fluorescent protein gene into a chick and see that it expresses in a chick now then they will transfer this onto human so suppose we are transferring uh, trying to transfer um, fibrinogen gene how do you know that fibrinogen gene is there or not is it, it should be tagged with green fluorescent protein so that is how it it, uh, it is useful as a model uh, we are not going to produce a fluorescent chick we are not going to produce fluorescent chick but in fishes they are producing uh, green fluorescent uh, fishes because ornamental fishes are there they are growing in the aquarium ornamental fishes are being grown. so this acts like a model for further uh, experiment thank you sir student yeah still any more questions you can chat in the box put the message so that i can read the question and answer the question Sir, thank you, sir. This is Dr. Achita, Principal Labi, Arunmans College, sir. Madam, madam, thank you so much. Thank you so much, madam. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Principal, ma'am, for attending our webinar. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, one take-home message to all the students is: uh, we need to protect our uh, birds. We need to protect our plants. Uh, we need to protect our uh, Uh, environment. Uh, it is in your hands. Uh, by giving water and uh, grain to birds, whatever is a type of bird, it is going to be useful for ecosystem. So, a student should take up small projects on those. They can do apiculture. They go to a field and see. Uh, Maybe in future, ants are also useful in. Uh, protecting uh, plants i have that in the next class maybe future ants manam anukune cheemalu veet valla nem upayogam ledu an anukuntunna but even ants also have lot of things to do for protecting crops and plants i'll tell you uh, in future if we have such a situation also okay thank you very much sir for your nice conversation and the message delivered to our students of conserving our nature yes madam yes thank uh, you uh, now i request dr uh, tirupati sir to unmute yourself and uh, propose formal vote of thanks over to you sir okay uh, good evening kavita madam garu uh very good evening to all uh, respected uh, uh, today's uh, chief guest and uh, keynote speaker my godfather professor t e. christopher ruben sir uh, has uh, delivered an excellent uh, uh, lecture and uh, very hot topic and emerging topic that is emerging technologies in green yellow and red biotechnology this is very very useful for all the students who are interested to uh, becoming a researcher becoming a scientist and a research fellows and teaching faculty and even though the all uh, science uh, uh, students is very very useful for today's uh, lecture and uh, sir has uh, explained uh, one of the important area that is uh, 
how to conserve uh, conserve even though the honey bees and uh, conserve the uh, house sparrows and uh, and salso so these are very very important for uh, future uh, generations for food security so without these uh, uh, very uh, important pollinators without these uh, uh, honey bees even though house sparrows so we cannot uh, uh, develop or we cannot uh, uh, survive in future because of so the insecurity of the food so we are very very suffering uh, uh, lots of uh, facing lots of problems so that's why so today's lecture is very very useful for the conservation of the nature and also how to conserve the biotechnologies the new uh, emerging technology that is green yellow and uh, uh, red biotechnologies the, these uh, technologies is used for conserve the nature and conserve the all uh, uh, living organisms for future generations so sar has uh, uh, also uh, discussed in uh, my uh, uh, phd program sar is also uh, explain how to conserve the, even though the honey bees uh, sparrows and uh, the entire nature so sar is very very kind hearted and uh, uh, thinking about the nature and also the uh, uh, down trodden people so uh, sar has uh, uh, given an extraordinary lecture and we are very thankful to sir because of uh, sir uh, today's uh, suffering uh, severe cold and uh, uh, fever but sir has uh, uh, committed uh, sir his uh, commitments and uh, uh, dedication uh, towards the what sir has given to word uh, to given a uh, lecture sir has uh, given this uh, one and a half uh, hour without any interruption so because of we are very very lucky and we are very thankful to our professor uh, t christopher ruben sir so his <laughs> commitment his dedication his determination his role model and inspiring uh, us as a faculty of higher education department so we are uh, never forgettable your words sir so we are very lucky and uh, i am also one of the uh, research scholar of my professor my godfather i am very lucky sir uh, sir has giving as uh, valuable time for us so thank you very much sir for giving me giving uh, this uh, lecture and your valuable time for us thank you very much sir thank you tirupati thank you sir and uh, and uh, we are very thankful to uh, our uh, today's uh, pattern uh, dr j achuta devi madam garu principal uh, one of the prestigious institution in hyderabad that is rb vara women's college hyderabad autonomous and uh, principal of government degree college for women jagityal dr yamsani satyanarayana sar garu uh, giving me uh, for conducting this uh, uh, one day national webinar on emerging technologies in uh, green yellow red biotechnologies so we are very happy and thankful to all the organizers of today's uh, webinar that is uh, uh, convener of today's webinar dr uh, ye kavita dr ye rajini madam garu head department of botany and food and nutrition rb vara women's college and uh, co conveners of today's webinar dr a kavita madam garu department of botany rb vara women's college dr manjula madam garu rb vara women's college hyderabad and uh, vani madam garu and other uh, uh, lecturers other department other faculty of department of botany and also my department uh, Uh, Dr. G. Chandraya Sar Garu, Head Department of Botany, Women's College Jagityal, and uh, my senior faculty of Zoology Department, uh, Dr. A. Jyoti Lakshmi Madam Garu, Dr. K. Kiran May Madam Garu, Life Sciences, Life Sciences. So we are very happy and thankful to each and every uh, teaching and non-teaching faculty of both the colleges, and also my sincere thanks to Professor Sudarshan Reddy Sar Garu for uh, his kind-hearted and words uh, regarding of. Uh, Uh, making these uh, two institutions in collaboration manner and uh, conducting uh, such a wonderful program even though pg get uh, coaching and other competitive examination coaching also so mm -hmm. each and every uh, uh, faculty and also participants of today's uh, uh, webinar and uh, uh, students we are very uh, whole heartedly thankful to you each and every one thanks a lot over to kavita madam gar Uh, thank you very much, sir. For your formal word of thanks to each and everybody, I personally thank uh, 
uh, our secretary cum correspondent professor sudarshan reddy sir and uh, principal rb vera women's college dr rachita devi ma'am and uh, head department dr a rashmi ma'am for giving us this opportunity to organize this webinar in a smooth manner and i personally thank professor christopher sir in spite of his illness today he has delivered an excellent lecture and i hope all my students have taken up your valuable words and the knowledge from your sir uh, sir please uh, uh, sorry um, we make you uh, uh, to do this uh, webinar no no madam no madam you are welcome you are always welcome Uh, so get well soon, sir, and so that we can have more interactions like this in yes. the future. Uh, thank you very much, sir, once again. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Madam, thank you. Welcome, madam. Rajini, madam, thank you. See you again. Sir, one screenshot of for uh, this one, sir. Tirupati, sir. Sir, Tirupati, sir, you can also on switch on your video so that we can have a screenshot. Screenshot. Doctor Parvati, Doctor Malati, or are also there today. Vani ma'am, Vani ma'am also. Vani ma'am also, ma'am, please you can switch on your video for the screenshots. Yeah. So thank you very much, sir. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. See you again. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, thank you, sir. 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 Thank uh thank you for joining this webinar thank you very much ma'am you have to yeah yeah the session has been ended now you can stop recording okay ma'am stop it right so yeah